first time I heard Damien was on a compilation album. He sang the song Homegrown, which was a, a solo song of his. And I, I love this voice. You know, he reminded me a little bit of Robert Plant, one of my favorite singers. But still, still it was different, you know. Still his voice is very unique, I think. Later on I heard some of his other uh, vocal parts on, on bands like uh, Landmark and Threshold. And then they played here in Holland. And I went to a show to see Threshold and I saw him live. And he was just as great as on the album, maybe even better. Uh, I still remember that they played this whole two-hour show, you know, really me uh, heavy music. And at the end they did a ballad and he sang it perfectly. So after the show I went backstage and uh, I remember, yeah, I, uh, it's maybe it's, I don't know if it's a habit of him, but he, uh, he pukes after gigs, you know, he gives him everything and then so he, he just came from the bathroom and I wanted to shake hands with him. He said, I just puked, puked and I said, I don't care. So I shook his hand and uh, at that time I asked him to, uh, if he wanted to sing on Arion. He didn't know Arion, so I sent him a, a couple of my albums. And <clears throat> well, luckily he was really impressed by my music. It was exactly the style that he liked. And um, he was also very fast. Uh, uh, in the studio and very very emotional I, I still remember I gave him my guide vocal and said well this is the melody and he changed it completely he just stood behind the mic and he improvised and he did it his own way luckily you know because it was, was much better than the stuff I wrote Hark back to olden days to her and her magic ways to souls in harmony in an endless sea, the cruel wings of destiny carried you away from me. I'm left a heart unstilled that never will be filled. And uh, when I was finished recording Damien, I knew that I had to work with him in the future. But because not only is he a great singer, and not only does he fit perfectly on Arion, but um, he also turned into a really good friend of mine. Of course, I knew Annika from uh, her band The Gathering, and a uh, great band, great singer. And uh, when I heard it, I knew I had to have her on, on Electric Castle. Uh, but she was very hard to convince, I have to say. Uh, I, had to, I had to do my best, you know, give her a couple of calls, and she had to talk with the band and stuff like that. But finally, and luckily, she agreed. And she came over to the castle, and I planned whole, all day for her, you know. She had to, uh, she played the part of the Egyptian, and she had to do like five songs or something. So she came in, and uh, she sang, and one and a half later, uh, one and a half hours later, she was ready, you know. That was it. I mean, her pitch is perfect, her vibrato is, is beautiful. Uh, well, simply a really great singer. The fields of Yaru lie waiting for us all. Rejoice, the judges have ruled. We have been chosen to enter the great hall of Isis and Osiris. The first time I heard Edward Rekers was when he had a huge hit with the, with the band Kayak with the song uh, Ruthless Queen and uh, already then I, I loved this voice, what a great singer. And a couple of years later I had to do vocals for a Pink Floyd tribute album and the other songs were sung by Edward and I heard him sing again and I thought, oh, this guy, he's brilliant. And he is a true professional, he, uh, uh, different from Damien, you know, Damien sings whatever he wants, whatever comes up. but. Uh, uh, Edward sings uh, the melody exactly like I gave him, only a lot better, of course. And he's also got this, this beautiful, very clear voice and, uh, and this beautiful vibrato. And um, same thing as with Anneke, he was finished within the hour. Is this the end? Will we transcend the need for human pleasures? Will we abandon all our earthly treasures? Will mankind yield on the battlefield of natural selection to an inorganic digital perfection? 
Of course, I knew Fish from his Marillion days. Needless to say, I've always been a big fan. Um, not only of his voice, but his whole charisma, you know, his whole personality. So, um, for Electric Casa, I was looking for, for singers with a personality. And um, a journalist gave me uh, the phone number of, of uh, a Fish, and I, I called him up. And he was interested, but it was hard to convince him. So it took me a couple of months to, to uh, really convince him to be on the album. And I sent him a couple of my first two albums. And um, finally, I, I wanted to give up, you know, so I sent, I think I sent an email to his management. I said, well, within a week I have to decide whether I take him or another singer. And he called me up, and uh, in his Scottish accent, you know, he's, he's going like, uh, Hey, Arian, is that right? You know, is that the way to pronounce your name? And um, he said he was interested, so I flew to Scotland uh, to work on the songs with him, because uh, I had the part of the Highlander in mind for him. And, uh, of course, who am I as a Dutch guy to write, to write lyrics for uh, uh, someone who's from Scotland? So I definitely wanted him to write his own lyrics because I felt he would do a better job than me. And um, I also asked him to sing in his really Scottish accent because I really like that. You know, it reminds me of uh, Star Trek maybe, who knows. Um, and then uh, I went back to Scotland to his studio and um, recorded, uh, we recorded I think everything in like one day and one evening. And uh, I can only say, what a character, what a character, you know. For instance, this part in, in, in uh, uh, Isis and Osiris, where he has to ad-lib, uh, and he's doing this part about constellations, you know. And it's completely ad-libbed, you know. He didn't know, he was going to the mic, he said, okay, what do I have to talk about? I said, well, you're uh, alone in space, you don't know where you are. And uh, he went up to the mic and he ad-libbed this whole thing. Um, I can only say, what a, what a character, what a amazing talent this guy is. Can you see the stars? Can you recognize the constellations? If I could only see the hills that we're supposed to climb. Even the sunlight. It doesn't warm, doesn't warm. How are we going to find our way? If we can't recognize the stars and we can't recognize the constellations, where do we go? Where do we go? Where do we go?